everybody. How are you? Hope you're having a really great afternoon. So Chantal's back at it again. She did a video called Day One of Trying to Reverse Diabetes. Now, I did a react last night to the two small videos she put out, the part one and part two. The part one was her talking about having diabetes. And the second part was truly horrendous, <laughs> especially considering part one. She confessed to having diabetes, and then part two was her having a meal that really no diabetic should have. It was just loaded with sugar. There were juice boxes everywhere. There was cobbler. I mean, it was a complete mess. But she did a video today called Day One of Trying to Reverse Diabetes, and I've got so much to say about it. But not only that, I've been all over Twitter, and there's a lot of great people on Twitter with a lot of great opinions and information and I want to share that information with all of you. I would also like to extend a thank you to everyone who got in my comments. And when I asked the question, what is healthy blood sugar for a person versus unhealthy blood sugar? A lot of you stepped forward and you educated me a little bit that blood sugar around 100, 120 is about normal, but Chantal's range, which is in the 300s, is completely over the top dangerous. She should be going to the hospital right now, but she's not. And she claims that's her resting blood sugar. So thank you to those who are giving me an education about diabetes, because as I said, I don't have it. I don't know anybody else that has it. So I just want to be educated about the matter. So thank you again for all the information, y'all. Really appreciate it. So let's go on over to the good people on Twitter and check out some of the informational, educational tweets on Twitter. Full credit to all these people on Twitter that are posting this stuff. So D Angry Scott says, Foodie Beauty starts her health journey by lying to herself in the audience. Claims she weighs 362 pounds, but shows us the scale is only able to weigh up to 396 pounds. So it's not an accurate weight considering that fact. Great job, sweetie. Also claims she's been fasting for 14 hours. Do I believe that that scale is accurate? No. It has nothing to do with me being a hater or not liking foodie. She's claiming to be at a lower weight now than she was back in her BB days. When she was back with her ex-boyfriend, BB, her last true weigh-in was 377 pounds. So she was very, very close to 400 pounds at that time. And anybody who looks at a video still of her, how she looked then compares to how she looks now, there's no possible way that she is at a lower weight now than she was then. As a matter of fact, I think I have a picture of her on my timeline of how she looked then versus how she looks now to kind of just put things in perspective and we'll get to that. But that scale, that's a scale that she's had for a while. And it's very easy to manipulate a bathroom scale. You can have somebody stand on it before you do. You can put it on carpet. You can put it on an uneven floor. You can stand on it with one foot. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to mess with a bathroom scale. I'm not going to believe foodies weight is real until she goes to a doctor and they put her on a medical scale that she cannot mess around with. If I had to take a guess about how much food he weighs, easily 525, 550. You know, maybe maybe more, but it's definitely over the 500s. It's definitely not under 400. So thank you for that tweet, the angry Scott and Kristen. Uh, Hidden Truth says, I'll never be ready. Setting the stage and foreshadowing her failure and giving a reason to quit. She'll blame reaction channels and haters for her failure because she listened to negative remarks. Uh, this is also courtesy of D. Angry Scott saying, yep, this part really showed that she isn't scared enough or aware of the risks she's playing with. Hashtag Foodie Beauty said this after listing all of her excuses, hopefully tomorrow. So let's watch the clip courtesy of D. Angry Scott. Tomorrow was hopefully going to be turning a new leaf and uh, yeah. Tomorrow? Why not today? Is it not enough that you are losing mobility? That when you stand up, you're out of breath? That's not enough reason to start today? 
listen, I've been on this foodie beauty train for years. I've been watching her for a long time. When a person is not ready to make a change, when they're truly not ready, their best friends are tomorrow, someday, later, maybe. They never want to get to know or have phone conversations with today and right now. They will avoid them like the plague. They'll block their number. So we're not even started with this thing. And she's already bringing it up tomorrow because if she can put it off till tomorrow, that means she doesn't have to make changes in the present. So she's already, she's already setting herself up for failure with that thinking. I'm going to try harder than I've ever, ever tried. I have to. I'm, I'm scared by what I'm seeing. I don't know. It's probably still not enough, you know, for me to, to be ready to do this. Um, the thing is, I'll never be ready. I'm waiting to be. You know, we as people, we write our own prophecies. If you say you can't do something, then you can't. And if you really want to, you will find a way. Where there's a will, there is a way. If you have no will, you won't try to find a way. So she's saying out loud, I'll never be ready. Well, then you'll never be ready then. You'll never accomplish your goals with that thinking. You, you've already lost the race without even putting your shoes on and standing at the starting line. Be ready. I'll never be ready. I, ne I never, ever want to go through the discomfort of having to change. Change is uncomfortable, especially a big change. Change can be scary. For some people, it can be terrifying. Taking a huge leap of faith or taking a huge leap of hard work. But if the goal is important enough, you'll do it. You'll take the leap and you won't be afraid to fall and skin your knees and get back up and dust yourself off and get things done. That's how you grow as a person. That's how you become a better person. Foodie, it, you're, you're such a marshmallow though. You don't want to do anything if it means you're gonna be the slightest bit uncomfortable or the slightest bit in pain. But here's the irony of your life. Every day that you live with all that extra weight around you, you're already in pain. You can't move across a room without being in pain. It's hard for you to breathe. It's hard for you to do anything. You're already in pain. So isn't that weird? You already live with tremendous amounts of pain, but yet the pain of change is too much. It's something you don't want to deal with. So live in discomfort and pain, and that's fine. But the pain of change is it's just something you don't want to deal with. Oh, okay, whatever. Tomorrow is... Okay, we're, we're going past that. We've already watched it. So it's, she's setting herself up for failure. Okay, this is courtesy of Broccoli Monster Confusion Guaranteed. Okay, this is an old thing. This has been going around for a while. Somebody made this long ago. This is also courtesy of the Kiwi farmers. This is the Chantal cycle. Okay. So this, this is the cycle that she follows. And, and here's the weird thing. This was done a long time ago. And it's still relevant today. So we've got uh, stage one weight loss attempt. Stage two breakdown. Stage three having a B moment. Stage four, awakening. So we're stage four right now. We're at the last part of the cycle, and we're about to go into stage one again. <laughs> it's amazing how this was done so long ago, and it's still relevant. And I'll just freeze the screen for a minute so you guys can read it. There's a lot to read. I've already read, read it before once. But that's the Chantal cycle. You know, she's got a formula and the formula has not changed. Hence the reason why her health sucks. Uh, another one from D Angry Scott saying the next time Foodie Beauty tells us we have no right to know about her health issues and shouldn't discuss them, we can remind her of this. Yeah, about that Foodie. You can't sit there and put things on the table for discussion 
And the next minute after that, say, it's none of your business. Well, if it's none of our business, then don't tell us. Don't make it into a video. Don't put it on YouTube. You're coming on camera talking about diabetes, talking about your health struggles, talking about all this stuff related to your health struggles. You're putting it in the public eye. You're putting it up for public discussion so the public is discussing it. And it doesn't matter if you like people in the public discussing it. It doesn't matter if you like the reactors and them discussing it. The point is you started the conversation and the conversation is going to continue for as long as it does. Just deal with it. Okay, this another one from D Angry Scott saying, congratulations, Foodie Beauty, a blood sugar rating of 230 mg, that's 12.8 mmol, after 14 hours of fasting confirms your body is completely unable to regulate your blood sugar. There's no way you're going to put this into remission with dieting. Some people can do it. You're not one of them. Well, she certainly can't do it if she's got an issue with food that is completely untreated and it's raging out of control. She needs to go into inpatient, locked down, strict inpatient, where she cannot get out. She cannot sneak eat. Nobody can bring her food. Her All her food is regulated. All her food is uh, supervised. And she can scream and she can cry and nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to give in to her demands. That's what she needs. But she'll never do it. Her problem with food is so incredibly severe. That's the only thing that would work. There, anything below that would not. But 230 for a resting blood sugar, that's insane. Insane. Okay, now, y'all pay attention to this. This is interesting. Lean in, y'all. This, this, is, this is something good. This is from Book Lady. Okay. Oh, oops. Okay, in Kuwait, and this is a, an article from Kuwait. In a bid to cut expenses, achieve health security, and prevent the entry of unfit people, the health ministry announced a new list of 21 diseases and ailments that will prevent newly recruited expatriates from entering Kuwait, say informed sources. The sources said in the new list include brittle diabetes, irregular high blood pressure, cancer, Strabicius, I guess that's being cross-eyed. I, I don't know why being cross-eyed would be a problem, but okay. Weak eyesight, kidney failure. Well, foodie, you're done. You're done. Lameness, contagious diseases, HIV, hepatitis B and C, microfilaria, malaria, leprosy, pulmonary tuberculosis, tinnitus. Hold on. Why they got a problem with people who've got ringing in the ears? I've got ringing in the ears. That's not contagious. It just bothers me. What's going on with that, Kuwait? Huh? Fibrosis and calcification of the lungs, inflammation of the pl pleura, hypertrophy, contractions, pregnancy for women applying to jobs, and other conditions due to which an expat applying for a visa to enter Kuwait will be deemed unfit and rejected. So... You got diabetes, Chantal, and your kidneys are screwed. So what you going to do? What you going to do? Is this why you're so nervous? Because of the new policies over there? I think so. Thank you for posting that book, lady. That was very informative. Uh, Aliyah Sultana says she wants the community to come together for support. WTF. Only when she needs support, then there has to be a community. You are in your own, you are, eh, words. You in your own, Chantal. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, about the whole community thing. Those of you that are VIBs, understand what's about to kick off. What's about to happen is Chantal, she's coming on camera. She's looking for the sympathy. She's using the softer voice. She's sounding all confessional. Understand that that is highly, highly manipulative. She got in trouble recently. She was talking way out of pocket about Yaba, her family, and someone that Yaba was connected to who is no longer with us. She's gotten some backlash for it. 
And the only reason why she's acting this way and she's bringing this up right now is because she's in trouble and she's in a corner and she's trying to pivot herself out. But those of you that are VIBs, those of you that watch Chantal and not through a reaction channel, understand the hole that she's digging in the ground that she's going to have all of you fall in. So she's doing this whole journey of correcting her health. Right? Right. She's already setting herself up for failure by continuing to use food as part of her content. Not only that, she's putting tags on her videos to attract the food fetish people. Even now, she's still doing that. But she's telling all of you, hold me accountable. So if she fails, who do you think she's going to blame her failure on? Not you. I'm sorry, not herself. You, all of you. She's going to blame the community for her failures. She's not going to look at herself and say, I, I'm, to, I'm to blame. It's my fault. I didn't do all I should have done. She's going to blame shift on anyone who's a viewer saying it's your fault. You didn't hold me accountable. It, it, it's completely your fault. She's going to make all of you feel like crap. Just, just know it's, it's going to happen. She's going to tell you to hold her accountable, but the moment you do, she's going to block and ban you when, when she decides that she's done pretending to care about her health. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass says, look, no one is obligated to care about, feel bad for, or coddle anyone that has not cared about themselves and been nasty to the point of verbal abuse when others have offered help or support. True. Absolutely true, Florida Salt and Sass. Chantal has lashed out at even her caring supporters. No one here owes her niceness. No. No. Niceness, you either give it because you want to or because somebody earned it. But just because Chantal is coming forward saying she has diabetes, that does not mean everybody should just be nice to her. She is not a nice person. She's a very abusive person. She doesn't care about anybody. She doesn't care about herself. Why should anybody be nice to her? After what she did to BBJ, sorry, you don't deserve my nice. I'll say that for somebody who does deserve it. Okay, now here, here's a picture that I was talking about, courtesy of DX and Peace and Marinara. So Peace and Marinara says November 22nd versus November 23rd, a year apart. Excuse me. Pardon me. I'm so sorry. This is a year apart. One year. And she's over there trying to say that she's 362 pounds. There's a lot of difference between this picture and that picture. There's a lot of difference. A lot. That's about a 75 to 100 pounds difference, Chantal. So what are you talking about? I've lost weight. Where'd you lose it? You doubled your size in one year. Uh, Astrid says, can you imagine if your YouTube income was dwindling and you had to border hop every three months just to be with a man who won't touch you? Her anxiety and depression stems from not only her fake relationship, but the reality that this can only last until the money runs out. Yeah, and how long can that be? I mean, let's be serious and let's talk real for a minute. All it would take to make Foodie's world tumble completely around her is one medical emergency. If she had, and this is not me wishing something upon her, Foodie is wishing that upon herself with the way she's eating and making food into her content. But Foodie, if you have, if you had a stroke, if you had a heart attack, if you had a medical condition that will put you in the hospital for just a few weeks, you'd be done. Absolutely done. That's all it would take. One missed paycheck, your whole world will come crumbling down. And you don't have a partner that he's going to take over paying the bills and 
taking care of responsibilities. The moment that he figures out the money has officially dried up, he'll be gone. He's there as long as the money is there. But you keep forgetting that part of the formula is you're abusing your body and your body has to keep trucking. But what happens when it can't? You know, you're ruining your health. At some point, everything catches up to you. And you're doing all this for what? For a guy that doesn't love you. So, yeah, smart decision. Perfectly Imperfect says, Ozempec in Kuwait would run foodie about 100 KD, which is about $448 Canadian. Okay, this is an interesting article. Uh, let's see, I don't know where this is article this article is from. But this is kind of scary. I, I don't know where this was taken from. Uh, but the article says he indicated that these medications are being sold illegally on social media platforms and inside clinics without supervision, noting that some clinics are selling the injections at three to four times their real price. The cost of an injection is, I guess, is 36 KD, but it is sold at the clinic for 100 KD. We do not know whether a single needle is used for more than one patient or not. That's scary. That's scary. And this will be pose a danger to the patient. This phenomenon is unhealthy and alarming. The only way to, to lose weight is to adopt healthy eating habits. So are you getting Ozempec like black market foodie? You know, like under the table or something? Because that sounds dangerous. Dangerous. Ma'am. And honestly, I don't even know why she would want to take Ozempec in the first place. This is something that she's done before. She's taken Ozempec before. And she stopped taking it because she did not like the fact that she could not gorge herself. So it, it, it couldn't do anything for her. She just thought she'd have a quick fix to getting uh, smaller and Ozempec just didn't work for her because she didn't want to correct her diet. Okay. Okay. I Here's another one from Sarah Abbey. Here's Chantal when she was in the 370s. If she honestly thinks she looks smaller now than these pics. Yeah. So this was Chantal back in the BB days. This was her apartment with BB. Oh. Let's see. Well, they covered up her face. <laughs> but this was back when she was with BB. And she wasn't breathing heavy with BB. She didn't have trouble with her mobility. How is it that you're at a lower weight now than you were when you were with BB? You were like 15 pounds lighter now, according to you. But you're having much more trouble breathing, much more trouble walking, a lot more trouble doing simple things. You have to constantly be inside and have the fan on you. You're over there breaking toilets, breaking couches, breaking everything that you sit down on. I mean, how is that possible? And let's see. All right. Uh, Hidden Truth says, this is why I think she's lying about seeing a doctor. She's lying about hitting her blood work recently, too. Had she gone to a real doctor and got it documented, they wouldn't allow her reentry. That might be a reason why she's not going to the doctor. You know, maybe she doesn't want Salah knowing just how bad things really are. And she's afraid that he'll find out or she doesn't want somebody else knowing. So who knows? Uh, Wonder Mom says she's at 316 and 400 means a trip to the emergency room. If that's your resting blood sugar foodie, you are in trouble. Okay, that's it for everything on Twitter. Let's move over to the actual video. Okay, and let's just get through this thing. <laughs> All right, are we good? We're good. Perfect. All right, let's do this, y'all. Let's, 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 hey, we're all in this together. We're all going to suffer together. So let's do it together. Let's do it. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another video. Bismillah. This is my. Before she gets started. What is this? <laughs> what is that? 
I'm trying to figure that thing out. Is that a serving tray? That's not a normal plate. And why does she have it turned sideways? Uh, is that some kind of serving platter? That is not a plate. Why do you have the food on that thing? I, I don't get it. Also, you know that she's not serious about her health journey because she's still making food into her content. Like she's still coming on camera eating. Even though it's against the terms of service, even though she's got a problem with food and YouTube allegedly says, you can't do that, Chantal. She's still doing it and they're still letting her. If she was serious about getting healthy, she would keep what's going on with her health wise off camera. And that way she could be mindful of it and she could fix it. She won't turn it into a show. That's how you know she's not serious. You know, like by treating it as a spectacle versus a serious situation that needs to be corrected. It's just, she's treating it as a joke. When you treat something as a joke, you're not taking it serious and you're not going to do what you need to do. A dinner I made, I've been fasting for 14 hours. Um, I did a weigh in, so I'll insert that here. Okay, so I'm going to weigh myself and uh, for the weird haters, the scale is very basic. You know, at this point in time, foodie, you should take your focus off of people that don't like you. Because it seems like anymore, that's where your focus is. You're so focused on YouTube and people that don't like you on YouTube or people that don't like you on any social media. That's all you can see. Like, that's all you care about. It's ridiculous. You are so immersed in the internet that you're not paying attention to your real life. You really should unplug and cultivate a life off of the internet. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine being over 500 pounds, being as unhealthy as you are, having the health problems that you do. And even though that should be my entire concern, my entire focus, all I care about is my haters and making them angry and flipping them off and giving them the bird. You're about to do a weigh-in, which concerns your health, your health, your life. And the first thing out of your mouth is about the haters. You're always going to have people that don't like you, Chantal. But then again, you put that in play. Over the years, you've cultivated your image your personality for YouTube. You wanted people to not like you. You know, I remember growing up, I used to watch professional wrestling on, MT, on, on TV. I would watch WWE. I would watch WCW. Hey, don't yell at me. My dad got me into that. And I absolutely loved it. But one thing I remember about professional wrestling, they had the good guys and they had the bad guys. The good guys were the baby faces. The bad guys were the heels. You are a heel. But you are a heel that you relish your role. You walk to the crowd. People boo at you. They say things to you. And you adore it. You wallow in that attention. You want people to not like you. You're very comfortable in your role as a bad guy. If the reaction channels gave their attention to other channels, you would freak out. But you're focused on the haters. At this point in time in your life with your health being so bad, does it matter who hates you or who loves you? Your health should come first. Um, there's nothing on it where I can mess with. That button is for kg or pounds the battery and that's about it so yellow i have not speaking of the battery do y'all remember the video or the live that pete's did where he exposed the bathroom scale that he and foodie had it was off by 100 pounds he showed that to us that the battery was failing or something and when he got on the scale he was allegedly like 65 pounds or something so the scale was way off 
it's a commercial scale. There's so many things you can do to mess with the amount of weight that comes on the screen. There's so little, there's so many little tricks. She knows them all. Eating yet today. I am fasting about 14 hours now. So I don't believe that. I really don't. With the routine that she cultivated, with her eating every couple of hours, plus her snacks, does anybody out there believe that anyone like Foodie, who is that hyper fixated on food, that food obsessed, that she has to eat every two hours? with snacks with juices with soda she's constantly full she's constantly got something in her belly can go 14 hours without food i don't believe it right now this moment when she's doing this video she's way too calm way too calm if she had truly gone 14 hours without eating She'd be freaking out right now. She'd be panicking. She'd be manic and going for some food. If she's calm, she had something to eat before the start of this video. So she can control herself. Or this might be a possibility. She slept for 14 hours. And that's how she was able to go without eating for 14 hours. By the way, foodie, sleeping is not the same as fasting. That's just sleeping. Um, yeah. Um, let's go. All right. Time to turn it on. Zero. I have my abaya. You know, maybe it's, maybe I'm nitpicking. Sorry. But when I watched Hungry Fat Chick, when she did her weigh-ins, when I reacted to her, Foodie and Hungry Fat Chick were around the same size. And when Hungry Fat Chick got on the scale, like, you really couldn't see the scale much. Foodie just stepped on the scale. That shadow is awfully small. What does it say? Okay, 164.5 kg. I'll convert that. So, yeah, uh, that's what I weigh. Uh, like I said, I've been... No, you don't. No, you don't. No. I don't know what you did to that scale, but I would say add another 100 plus pounds to that amount, and that'll be the right amount. And I'm not saying that as a hater. I'm just saying that's, that's your true weight, foodie. You shaved over 100 pounds off the amount because I don't know. You've always been obsessed with 340, 350. You just won't get out of the 400s. I don't know why. Maybe it's because that was the weight that you were at when you were with BB. And there's a part of your brain that just doesn't want to acknowledge that you've gotten bigger. So you stick with the 300 numbers. Maybe you've got something in your head that you think as long as you're in the 300s, or you tell the lie that you're in the 300s that over 400 is fat or obese. So maybe mentally you're thinking, as long as I'm not in the 400s, I'm all right. You're not in the 400s. You're in the 500s. You just don't want to acknowledge that. Fasting for about 14 hours. So that's Lies. fasted. Um, oh, I also took my blood sugar reading, so I'll insert that here. So this is my fasted blood sugar. Yikes. that's bad so she fasted for 14 hours this is her first meal and her blood sugar is over 200 wow for today the time on the monitor is wrong it's not 8:09 p.m um i'm gonna have to definitely change that somehow <laughs> So yeah, that's a fasted blood sugar reading and a fasted weigh-in. And this is my dinner. Chicken breast, it's a halloumi chicken. So it's um, some roasted eggplant, just a eggplant with um, 
about, you know, I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but if she's got really high blood sugar already, if her blood sugar is 230, which I've heard that that's double of where it should be, like 100, 120 is where she should be. Her resting blood sugar is double that. Is it a good idea to eat fruit like kiwi? Isn't that high sugar fruit? It's a bad choice, I think. It's uh, a teaspoon of olive oil mixed between each slice and some seasoning, very lightly salted. Um, chicken breast with some seasoning. Um, and I baked it in the oven with some tomato, black olive, and halloumi. Uh, and that's about a, about an ounce crumbled up. I have one. She doesn't look excited to eat this food. That's the vibe I'm getting off of foodie. Like she is so not enthused to eat this way. Not at all. Kiwi, some raw unsalted cashews, and a low-fat plain yogurt. And I have two waters, and that's what I'm going to eat. What? Um, Why are the waters so small? I would think she want to drink more water, not have those little baby-sized bottles of water. Like, why is she drinking, like, little bottles of water anymore? You need to drink more water, not less, Chantal. Probably all I'm going to eat for the day. Okay, so I guess she's doing the OMAD thing. OMAD is one meal a day. She's going to do OMAD. Do I believe she can do it? No. She's got an issue with food. <laughs> and in order to correct that, you got to make gradual changes. You can't just go from one extreme to the other. It, it won't work. Your mind will fight you. Mentally, emotionally, your mind is going to be fighting you saying, what's going on? Like, what do you think you're doing? This is nonsense. Cut it out. <laughs> when you go from completely healthy, uh, unhealthy eating to healthy eating, changes in routine that are that extreme and that sudden, the, the, the sudden extreme shift, it just, it throws you off. Absolutely throws you off. But I'm going to put my theory on the table. Why she's doing the one meal a day and she's doing it on camera because by doing the OMAD thing, at least on camera, she can eat the most amount of food. You know, like maybe I'm just guessing here. Maybe foodies thinking is if I'm going to eat one meal a day, which I, I don't think she's going to stick to that. But since it's one meal, I can eat whatever I want or I can eat more. Like she's got obsession with volume and bulk and getting the most she doesn't like being restricted she doesn't like small portion sizes she doesn't like small amounts she feels like she's missing out on something or she's being held away from something so with omad there's one meal and it's a a lot of food i guess or a decent amount and that gives her more i guess inner comfort knowing she can get more volume I'm just speculating here because I have to like lower everything very drastically, very quickly because yeah, you guys know if you watched my videos yesterday, um, honestly, it's made me a little bit even scared to eat. If I'm being quite honest, it's weird. Why? Right, let me try the chicken. I hope it's cooked through. It was frozen, frozen chicken breast. Looks yummy. And juicy. Yeah, it's cooked. That's good. This meal. Where's the eyes rolling in the back of the head, foodie? Where's the O face? Where's your eyes rolling? Where you're not having that umami moment. You're not having a moment with yourself. You know what that tells me? You don't like this. Mm. Mm. That's really good.
is that the face of a woman that likes the food she's eating? No. I'm sure it's perfectly fine. And there's nothing wrong with chicken, yogurt, cashew nuts, and kiwi fruit. But this is not her jam. This is not the food she likes. Not at all. She'll eat it on camera because she's doing it for sympathy. But deep down, she's hating it. And you know what's happening off camera, right? She's going to eat this on camera, trying to get everybody on her side, trying to get out of trouble for what she said about Yaba and her family. But off camera, she's telling Salah to go to, get to Burger King and get her some food. Eggplant could be cooked a bit longer. Not bad. I have some salted jumbo barbecue flavored cashews in the room. Somebody, somebody online said that that belonged to Salah. That the barbecued seeds or whatnot belong to Salah. So what are you going to do, foodie? Wait till he goes to sleep or he leaves the seeds out and take his portion? They're now Salah's. <laughs> yep. And you'll never get him back. <laughs> Can't eat those anymore. Yeah, but that is ever has that ever really stopped you before? I'll never forget the live stream that you did where you were having a snack attack. And you snuck into Pizza's room while he was asleep. And you took his M&Ms. You actually snuck into his room and took his M&Ms without him knowing. And then you went back in your room and you were shoving handfuls of them in your mouth. Pete's got up. He was angry. He was mad for you waking him up. He was especially angry that you were eating his snacks and he took the bag back, but not before you devoured about three quarters of it. You have no respect for other people's things. Hmm. Really good yogurt. Um, so purpose of this is not really just mukbang. It's just also just to talk to you while I'm eating dinner. But it is a mukbang. You're sitting there eating a meal. It's a mukbang. Or at least it's, you know what? You're right. It's not a mukbang. It's a yukbang. Because really you shouldn't be eating on YouTube. Not with your issue with food. It's a yukbang. Food should not be your content for a variety of reasons. I'll probably be eating a lot of stuff like this. Some kind of OMAD. I like the skin on the kiwi. <laughs> mm. So I'm probably going to eat like um, very low carb, no processed carbs at all, no sugary drinks, just water. Y'all, let me tell you something. This is not about me, but I'm saying this so you guys know where I'm coming from. I had BED for six years. It wasn't on the level of foodies. You know, like her severity is way above what happened to me. But I was a carb addict. And when you're a carb addict, 
trying to avoid carbs is it's nearly impossible because there's sugar in everything you eat and just about everything you drink foodie is a carb addict she loves her sugary drinks she loves her sweets she loves her rice she loves her pasta she loves her bread she absolutely loves carbs a regular meal for her most of it would be carbs would be very little protein or veg somebody who as as severe as she is who's gone that far to go from that severity of of wanting carbs to just i'm going to cut out all carbs no not going to happen not going to happen especially at night like i said that's when the urges become the most intense she's not going to be able to do it not going to be able to she's going to have her little snack attacks and she's not going to be able to say no plain tea maybe an americano if i want to drink but no sugar until you know i want to get everything under control these are really ripe mm. Ma'am, you're talking about controlling your carbs and controlling your sugar. At the same time, you're eating fruit. And certain fruits have more amount of sugar than others. Like, let me, you know what? While we're here, let me just look something up. Do kiwi fruits. Sorry, I got my have. Do kiwi fruits have a lot of sugar? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I stayed corrected. Uh, it says uh, kiwi fruits are rich in vitamin C and low in sugar with just 6.7 grams of sugar per fruit. Okay, hey, I'll be the first to say I was wrong. When you're wrong, you're wrong. When you're right, you're right. Uh, do kiwi fruit, do they raise the blood sugar? Uh, on a whole fruit basis, because of the high water content of kiwi fruit, a 100 gram kiwi fruit would be equivalent to about five grams or one teaspoon of glucose in its effect on blood glucose. Thus, kiwi fruit have a low glycemic impact. Okay, sorry, I was wrong. I apologize. I just, kiwi fruits are really sweet to me, so I thought they had high sugar. My bad. I was just wondering why she was eating it, but let's keep going. But that still doesn't explain the cobbler and the fruit juices last night. That's not good for you, foodie. So I want to do intermittent fasting. I want to give my body time to, you know, deplete some of the, is it glycogen stores? <laughs> I used to hate on keto. You know what it is? It's the dirty keto. You know? But I understand the idea of eating low low carb if you're if you're diabetic, you know. Mm. So I apologize if I just sounded really know-it-all before with that. You but always do. I can act like that sometimes. No, all the time. You, you set yourself up for failure, but you also set your audience up to be yelled at. You tell them to hold you accountable. You want them to support you. And then when you start slipping and they do as you ask them to do which is hold you accountable when they come to you and say foodie what are you doing 
You said you want to get healthy. You said for us to hold you accountable. You're setting them up to get yelled at and get blocked because you will never admit that your failures are your fault because you're not being proactive with taking care of yourself. You want to shift the blame on other people. I'm really starting to love plain yogurt. Mm. So I'm thinking of meals, very simple, but nutritious. That's the that's the whole point, you know, especially of like OMAD. Um, and if I really need to eat something, again, something nutritious, high in protein, low in sugar, maybe like a tuna or a piece of cheese, a drumstick, something like that. So I'm going to try to do more. Hi. You're so cute. <laughs> when she wants my attention, she just lays on her back and looks super cute. Like, which pose can I do to get her attention? And they know it works. <laughs> so, yeah, things like maybe a hamburger patty lean hamburger patty some cheese grilled onion mustard big side of like broccoli veggies i always like to eat nuts especially cashews i find that they're very filling well if they're so filling why do you eat so much fast food Halloum is so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving along. If it stops pouring. Chicken's very juicy with the tomatoes cooked on top. Chantal, there was no reason to make this video almost 19 minutes. There's so many long pauses and awkward silences. <laughs> you really just don't come on camera prepared, do you? If you guys have any, I should start a group somewhere so we can share recipes and things like that. Why would anyone want to share recipes with someone who doesn't like to cook? You don't have a passion for cooking. You have a passion for eating and getting paid for it. That's about it. Very juicy, <laughs> delicious chicken. I'm glad I made this halloum chicken, halloumi chicken. She looks bored eating this. I'm not saying the food is bad. I don't know the recipe, but she looks bored. She's looking down at that plate like, where's my nashi? <laughs> Where's my twisty misty? Where's anything? She's not happy. You know what happens when you're eating stuff that you're not happy with, you're not satisfied with? You go for what you're really craving. And it makes the cravings worse, much worse. I'll post the recipe for this.
Mm. In the description box. Can you hurry up and eat? I'm so bored watching her eat. Like, hurry up. Just make the conversation. Remember that old saying? Nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. I'm going to scratch that. Nothing feels as good as healthy feels. And there's healthy in every size. But she's not healthy. And so, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. Because just because you're skinny does not mean that you're healthy. <laughs> you know what, foodie? I'm going to go on record saying this to you. Your narrative switches on what's going on at the moment and the environment. Because I will bet dimes to donuts that if you were of a much smaller size, if you were much thinner, you would be that person that you would be bashing on other people that were bigger. You would be a bully and you would say awful things about people that were say your size. You would, you know, you would, if you were say, I'm just, I'm just going to make up a number, a hundred pounds, 120 pounds, 150 pounds. As awful as you are now, you'd be 10 times worse. Your narcissistic ego would need an entire planet to exist on because it's so big. Where's your skinny jeans? Where's your high heels? I mean, <laughs> oh, you would be so arrogant. Absolutely intolerable. Mm. Oh, what was that? Did y'all catch that? Just a second ago, she bit into one of the nuts on the one side, the bad side, and it hurt. I caught that booty. I caught that. You winced. Boy, you must have some severe cavities on that side. I was really depressed earlier. I was like... Never. Never gonna get to eat. Pizza. I know you're thinking you shouldn't restrict yourself that much, but right now I have to, like, I can't even have things in moderation because it's not just about weight loss anymore. It's about health. And I, well, the thing is, you know why you can't have certain things right now because you don't have control because you have a skewed view of food. You're making it wear too many hats. You're using it as, a cure for your depression, a cure for your anger, your sadness, to calm you down when you get upset, to calm you down when you get angry. You're using it in place of love and comfort. It's got too many hats it's wearing. And the only hat that food should be wearing is it's something you consume to give you energy to go out into the world and do stuff. That's its only job. If you have a bunch of emotional anchors and responsibilities attached to food, you're going to run into problems. Got to take those anchors off to set yourself free. Using food as a cure-all for everything, that's where you're running into trouble. Honestly, that's where you're running into a lot of trouble. I can't eat things that will. But you have no self-control. If you sit down to eat a pizza... You won't stop at just one slice of pizza, which would be fine. You'll eat the entire pie and you'll order another one and another one and another one. You can't just have a few chips. You'll want the whole bag. 
And then you have Salad go out to the 7-Eleven and buy another bag. You have to do the most. It has to do with your lack of self-control and not being able to moderate. Spike my, spike my blood sugar because like I'm literally on the verge of like literal health crisis. So I really need to be. Listen, are we supposed to feel sorry for you? Because I don't. You are, listen, you are doing the most right now, foodie. You are playing your own tiny little violin, trying to get that sympathy, trying to make your VIBs feel concerned for you. This is why I'm ticked off. Because you'll come online and you will hint at people, I'm on the verge of a medical emergency. Which is going to make those who watch you concern for you. They're going to come into your chat room saying, are you okay today, foodie? Are you all right? How do you feel? You want people's attention, but you try to get it in the worst way. You keep people on edge. You keep their blood pressure up. You keep them scared. You keep them nervous. They can't just tune into you and enjoy your content and be chill. No, it's about I got to be concerned for this person because they have no control over themselves. And they're not trying to help themselves. But still, I, I'm a caring person. I have my empathy and I care about this person. And obviously, they're they're in danger. If Foodie's in danger, it's danger that she put herself in. And she's got to get herself out. And it's not right for her to come online and throw all of the weight of her life problems on everybody else's shoulders and expects people to carry that weight. Not when all of us, those of us that are reactors, those of you in the audience, we all got our issues. We all got our problems. Right? We got things to do. Got to figure our stuff out. But only locals overshare and they do it to garner sympathy and to make money. But the problem with Foodie is that she's been doing this for so long and she's done it so much that all of her tactics aren't working. But still, she wants people to be concerned for her. She wants people to worry over her. The truth of the matter is she's a 39-year-old woman. She should be all about handling her business right now. She's old enough. She's not 16. She's almost 40. If she cared, she would be proactive in making her life better. She wouldn't just come online and talk about what's wrong with her. She'd fix it. Very diligent, even if it's something that depresses me, even if it's something that almost kills me. Because in reality, it won't. It's actually good for me. And I just have to keep telling myself that. And, um, you know, it's just something that has to happen. There's no, there's no way around it. So you care about your health. When's the last time you've been to a doctor, a real doctor, for a complete physical and checkup? Hmm? Where's the mention of that? Where's the mention of going to therapy? for your BED, for whatever other mental or emotional issues you might have. There's no talk about that. There's no talk about any kind of medical care that you are gonna be receiving or are receiving. It's just you getting online and showing yourself eating a meal and monetizing the meal. I'm sorry, do better. And it can be very depressing at first because when food is like, if you, when you use food to, to cope with things and you take that away, you have to find whole new ways to cope. I said that. And I've been saying that for the longest, haven't I y'all? Haven't I said that? Should really just be like turning to Allah and to prayer and everything. Now, you, foodie, you said you moved to Kuwait to be closer to Salah and Al. Is it Allah? Not trying to be disrespectful to anybody that's Muslim. Allah, to be closer to Allah. You felt closer to Allah in Kuwait. So you've been in Kuwait for over a year. According to you, that was better for your mental and emotional health. 
being Kuwait was supposed to be better for you because it kept you away from some of the vices that you had a problem with. So there you are in Kuwait. You are away from some of those vices, although your number one vice is right in front of you and you've been overindulging, but you had Salah there. You could pray. You could get closer to Allah. So what happened? What happened? So, so I'm going to try to do that and um, just have faith in God, have faith in myself, have faith in this plan. And I want to thank you guys for all your supportive comments because, you know, they were mostly all really nice and positive. And that's because you deleted all the that, negative ones. A lot of them were constructive. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate that. It's encouraging, you know. What really also keeps me on track is thinking of the future. If I keep eating the way I was and not doing any exercise, I don't really have a future. I don't have nope. a good future. Um, if I lose weight and get healthy, regain my health, I have a whole new life I didn't get to live before. I can do you know I'm just gonna say it given the environment that you're in given the fact that you have somebody that he's totally on board with you destroying your health for money because he benefits you are in an environment where you have an enabler right there physically close to you and you have a YouTube channel where you have people in your chat that they enable you also. Not everybody does, but there are some enablers. You got some of the feedy people. It's a recipe for disaster. You're getting enabled on both sides, in person and on the internet. So as long as you're being enabled by people, there's no chance of recovery. The only thing that's gonna save you if you want to be saved, and honestly, I don't think you do. I think you just want to be online and make your money with the food content. And you don't want that to change. The only thing that would turn things around is if you had a real wake up moment and you realize you couldn't go any further. I don't think you've had that yet. I don't think you're going to have it. Also, to be in an environment, to be around people. They are not Beezers. They're not VIBs. They are people that will tell you no and won't let you get your way. That when you throw a temper tantrum, they don't care. But they're not going to give in to your demands. They're not going to give in to you acting like a brat. And the only place I could think of like that would be inpatient. And you're never going to go. So you'll never be in that environment that could actually help you do things I've never done because of my weight. So we can go to all the all the carnivals. Um, I still don't like some of the rides, but it's, uh, some I will go on just because I can. We can go to all the booths. I don't have to have anxiety about going to restaurants. You know, Thailand should have been a real wake up call for Foodie. She was there for over a month and she had more exposure to the public than she had in probably her entire time on YouTube. The actual public, not people on the internet that could only see her filtered self, but people in person, watching them the way they're reacting to her, staring at her, whipping out their phones to take her picture, uh, remarking about her weight. That should have been a real wake up call for her. But she came home from Thailand and she continued to not only do the mukbangs, but the portions got bigger. Now, all of a sudden, she cares about her health and she wants to do all these physical things. I'm sorry. I'm not buying what she's selling because I think the merchandise is rotten. It's defective. I'm not even taking it off the shelf because it's the same rotten merchandise on the same dirty shelf. It's been there for years. There's nothing good about it.
So why, why bother picking it up? It's the same old song and dance, recycled. Um, all kinds of things, you know? So I'm just being really strict at first because of that. And I will always have to be strict and really mindful of these things. You know, foodie, a lot of things happen with you. So much so that it's sometimes hard to remember everything in chronological order. But I do remember not too long ago, Salah or somebody was bringing you those diet meals. And you were doubling up on the portions for those diet meals. You didn't like it, but you did it. And you did a video one night confessing that you weren't sticking with those. You were having a lot of B moments off camera. And there was especially one night where you had a really bad B moment. So it would seem with you that restriction leads to that. So if you're really trying to go from one extreme to the other quite suddenly, you've already failed before and you know what that's going to lead to. So I realized that because slipping up is so easy. You know, yeah, but all- you know what? Not only do you slip up, you excuse it. Oh, I had a craving. I was craving that. It's no big deal. I'll just fix it tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and you slip up again. Oh, I'll fix it the next day. Next thing you know, you slipped up all month. And then you say to yourself, this is hopeless. This is pointless. Why bother? I quit. You, you want to quit right now. You've not even gotten really started. You want to quit right now. I don't see any determination in you. You've already given up. You're looking for an excuse to step out the door. All it will take is like one bologna sandwich, for instance, on white bread with chips. And that will, I know that will cause a spiral. So I have to really be. You know, I'm seriously hoping, Foodie, that you're not doing this to be more manipulative of Salah. I don't like him. He's a scumbag too. But knowing you, you might be using this to manipulate Salah to try to spend more time with you because you are that kind of person that you will go to another person and say, I have something wrong with me. And it's something that's wrong that I need supervision, which means it's your responsibility to supervise me. And if you're not here to supervise me, if I lose control, it's your fault. Something tells me that you actually do that to him or you would do that. That if he tried to go off to the red room or just have some time to himself, you will purposely have a B moment to try to make him feel guilty or to punish him for not spending time with you. You would turn it into an evil, manipulative thing. Be abstinent in a lot of ways, unfortunately. So (laughs) So I'm going to keep trying this OMAD thing and see how... Wait, what? What? I'm going to keep trying this OMAD thing. There is no try, as Yoda says. Either do or you don't do. Trying means you're not really committed to something. You're just dipping your toes in the water, but you're not all the way in. How that goes. Um, It's not going to be a huge meal, but it's going to be very nutritious, nutrition dense. Um, I think I should. Why do I get this feeling that she's still hungry? Like she's looking down at that plate like there's no more food and I want more. That's the vibe I'm picking up from Foodie right now. Like she is still hungry. Well, you know what that means. Camera shut off. She's going to raid that kitchen. Maybe also take a multivitamin or something as well. No, 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 girl. No, no, no. Look at that face. Look at it. Look, she's hungry. Girl, I know that face. I know that face. You're still hungry. You want more food. That did not fill you up. You are hungry. Your stomach is saying, is that it? That was a snack. We need more. All right, guys. I think that's it. Bye. Yeah, okay, whatever. Shut up. (laughs) You big old liar.
<laughs> oh my god. Uh, let's let's go to some comments. Magnolia says, are you telling me that she just found out today that she's a diabetic? With those numbers, you should be on metformin and insulin. Weight loss, diet, and exercise is crucial. If this doesn't give you a wake-up call, nothing will. Well, she's known for the longest she's had diabetes. She's had it for a while because she claimed a while back that she cured her diabetes, which means she had to have it in order to cure it, right? Ta da <laughs> So she had it and she cured it. Now it's back. There was no curing it. She's had it all along. She just didn't want to mention it until there came a moment where she got in trouble. Then suddenly it's a topic of conversation. So there's so many people in the comments trying to give her uh, advice. I, I, you know, God bless you, all you people trying to help foodie. You, you know, you're good people. You're just looking out for another human being, but understand that she does. She's not hearing you. She does not care. Food is her content. She wants to eat on camera and get paid for it. She's not really listening to you. And she's done the Ozempec thing before. She just didn't like how it made her feel, so she quit. Let's see, what else we got here? Oh, people kind of pointed this out on Twitter, so I'm mentioning this. Astro says, why does the furniture wobble like that when you show the plate at three minutes? Is it a filter or focusing something? Genuinely curious. It's a filter. Filters make things wobble like that. Born Villain says, please seek psychiatric help. Ah, words. Please seek psychiatric care. Otherwise, you'll never learn how to cope without eating and smoking. Yeah, therapy should be part of her healing, but she's not going to sit in front of a doctor and get to the heart of the matter. No, she only wants to get to the stomach of the matter. She doesn't want to deal with matters of the heart. This is a great comment from Crank saying, once you burn out the beta cells that produce insulin to your pancreas, there's no going back, period. You had the chance to reverse this when diagnosed years ago. Continuing to live in denial is going to put you in your grave soon. Stop playing around with your health. If you love your husband and want to not abandon him in death, you'd actually do the right thing and start treating your medical conditions appropriately. Your liver is struggling. You ignore it. Your O2 stat goes to heck when you start moving around. Ignore it and smoke. Your cholesterol and BP are sky high. Your heart is already enlarged from years of obesity and drug use. All ignored. You already show signs of congestive heart failure. Why don't you get it? Those of us with medical training see it plain as day. Every day you wake up, you have cheated death. It's that serious. You need serious psychiatric treatment. Otherwise, you will always fail. You need oxygen. You need medication for your cholesterol, blood pressure, and diabetes. You also have problems th th throwing clots and stopped blood thinners. Something else that could instantly unalive you. Sadistic feeders may love this content, but those of us with a soul can't watch you literally unalive yourself as an unhealthy coping mechanism. Yeah, about that. Just something I want to throw in here. It's funny how Foodie likes to call the reaction channels and the reaction audience haters. Foodie, you've got that all backwards. I know this may be a new idea for you. This may be a new concept, but just hear me out. You've got it backwards. Because the people that are on the reaction channels, the audience, the reactors themselves, when they speak, it's from a place of truth. They're giving their honest, true feelings, thoughts, and opinions. When somebody speaks truth, 
truth doesn't automatically translate to hate. If they're saying something you don't like or hurts your feelings, it doesn't mean because there's hate attached to it. It just means they're saying something that you're not ready to hear. Maybe there's too much truth in what's being said and you're just, you're just not ready for it. But if you want to call some people haters, the people that are the haters for real are the people that are on your own channel, the feedies that have the food fetish that they see you're not healthy. They see the fact that you're getting bigger and bigger, that when you stand up, you have trouble breathing. You have trouble walking. And yet they get on your channel and they talk about food. They mention food. They encourage you to keep eating. Knowing that you are dangerously unhealthy, they want you to continue satisfying their fetish. And so they applaud you when you do so. Those are the people that are the true haters because they're on board with enabling you and you hurting yourself. And the people on the reaction side of the community, we are not that about, we are not about that enabling life. We're not co-signing on your nonsense. And we're going to call it out. So if you want to live in your world of delusion and stick with the true haters and the enablers and continue to make yourself unhealthy and push yourself to a, a dangerous level, that is completely on you. But you might want to correct your thinking about what a hater is and what a hater is not. Truth does not equal hate. Truth is truth. So with that said, I'm going to leave you guys and I'm going to end this reaction and uh, post it up on YouTube. And I hope you all have a great day. If you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please do so. I'd really appreciate it. And everyone, y'all have a good one. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye now.